Uh, Magandang umaga po. The uh, joint hearing of the Senate Luriban Subcommittee on Proposed Senate Resolution Numbers 826 and 1114 is hereby called to order. Okay, uh, I, have with, I have with me here present uh, Senator Antonio Trillanes. May I call on uh, Director General Ki Attorney Kimbo to acknowledge the resource persons and witnesses present in today's hearing. Tony Kimbo, please. Your Honor, may I proceed? Uh, present today are Secretary Virgilio de los Reyes of the Department of Agrarian Reform, uh, Attorney Darlene Marie Berberabe, President and Chief Executive Officer of Pagibig, and from COA, Director Joseph Anakai, who is assigned with the BSP, and Ms. Resurrection Cueta, a, from the COA also, but assigned in Pag-ibig. And we have former Vice Mayor, Mr. Ernesto Mercado, Engineer Mario Echanova, former Department Head of, in the City Government of Makati, Attorney Renato Bondal, and Mr. Nicolas Ching, NC, so the sixth. And from Alpha Land, Jay Sangalang, and representing Mr. Roberto Ongpin, Attorney Rodolfo Ponferrada. And Mr. Gilberto Garcia from Noble Care. Correct? Yes. The uh, personalities appearing for the first time before the committee. Attorney and different. Abogado, even the counsel of uh, Mr. Delphin Lee, please, for the, the record. Counsels of Mr. Delphin Lee is their attorneys, Willie Rivera, see here, and Ronnie Garay, attorneys Garay and attorney. Now, are you making a presentation, attorney Garay? No. Is the attorney Rivera here? Can, you, can we call him now to, to join us and then? Okay, those who are appearing for the first time, <clears throat> can we ask Direc Director General Kimbo to administer the oath to these uh, personalities? Thank you. Those who are here for the first time, kindly stand and raise your right hand. These were affirmed to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this proceeding. Thank you. You may take your seat. Director... Anakai, Anakai. First time? Ano? Yes. Si Resurrection Cueta. Miss Cueta. I think she. Ah, Mister. Thank you. Ah, Mister Cueta. Are you appearing for the first time? Kelly, raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell? to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this proceeding. Thank you. You may take your seat. Okay, just a uh, gentle reminder to everyone. We, we are jointly hearing uh, two proposed Senate resolutions, so don't be surprised and don't be confused if we jump from 826, which is a different subject matter, and we jump to 1114, which is a different subject matter. So we will take advantage first of the presence of our DAR secretary, no? Virilio de los Reyes, who is here. Uh, we will listen to what he has to report to this subcommittee. And then if there are no more questions to be directed at the secretary, we will allow him to go. Okay. Uh, okay. Senator Trillanes, okay, sir. Sen secretary de los Reyes, please. Thank you, sir. Good morning, your honors. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. There are six uh, barangays involved in this particular inquiry which you ask your department to investigate. There are a total of 349 agrarian reform uh, beneficiaries in these six barangays. I'm referring to the six barangays, Your Honor, because it's the universe of the area which is around the Sun Champ uh, property. Of the 349, your department interviewed 91, and 91 persons appeared. 111 appeared through their uh, representative. 147 uh, agrarian reform beneficiaries failed to attend the ocular investigation. We visited 107 uh, landholdings. Of these uh, totals, Your Honors, 
70 uh, ARBs covering 70 land holdings st stated that they had sold their properties, but they did not give us any copies of the documents which uh, would signify that they actually sold this. Six of them signified that they had leased the property. Your department went to the register of deeds and we found out that there is no registration of any sale whatsoever and the cloas that, are, that were given in these six barangays are all active and are current on file with the register of deeds. Which means, Your Honors, that of the 349, we are continuing the investigation, but for those who have said that they have sold the property and they are not in possession anymore, the next step for the department particularly the provincial office, would be to file cancellation cases against, again, reform beneficiaries who have abandoned their land, or if they had sold the land, they had not sought the clearance of the Department of Agrarian Reform. So cancellation cases will be filed against the ARBs who have abandoned or sold the land without the permission of the department. The current rules, Your Honor, states that even if the uh, land has been given to the, again, reform beneficiaries beyond 10 years, they will still need to require clearance from the department and they will have to continue to cultivate it. Of course, there are also some situations which is subject to proof given by these beneficiaries. If the reason why they had uh, abandoned or sold the land or transferred the land are for justifiable reasons, and the justifiable reasons, Your Honors, are normally in cases of succession. And this is something that they will have to prove. But in the process of the investigation, they did not uh, give any documents. Now, focusing on the uh, properties which are within the boundaries of Sunchamp, we found 17 cloas within the properties of Sunchamp, and we plotted the uh, technical descriptions of the cloas which are on file with the department and overlaid this with the map of the cadastral map of the areas, particularly the six barangays. These are the names, the names of the people whose properties are found within the Sunchamp are the Comia family, the Duenas family, the Balolois, and the Desfi families. We also required them to come forward. Only Mr. Comia came, and then later on his lawyer uh, came, and then th this is the subject of an investigation right now. What you found out is that in particular the case of Duenas, this was originally a 15-hectare property, and prior to coverage by CARP, five hectares of these 15 hectares, more or less, was sold to Agri Fortuna Incorporated, and therefore the only one that was covered under the uh, Comprehensive Again Reform Program was 10 hectares. So before we even covered the land, that had already been uh, sold. And the 10 hectares was transferred again to, by way of voluntary land transfer to, the duen to members of the Duenas family, and this particular property is the ones within Sanchamp. So there are two cases that we're really looking at. The cancellation cases refers to the cause of action arising from abandonment or sales without uh, permission from the Department of Grain Reform. The second one that we're looking at is within the Sanchamp property are properties which have been transformed into non-agricultural uh, uses for which there, may, there is a possibility of premature conversion or illegal conversion. What we are doing right now, Your Honours, is that we are going, we are we're coordinating with the provincial uh, prosecutor because this case will be filed before the provincial prosecution office of Batangas, after which a case for illegal or premature conversion is going to be filed. We are not going to wait. Uh, we have given them chances to come before us. There is another hearing, I think, on April 24 and 30. And uh, the subject of the hearing has been, will be furnished to the councils because right now many of these ARBs are appearing through councils, and after that hearing, then we will file the appropriate cases with, with before the Department of Justice or before my office if the provincial uh, officer deems it proper to do so. Dr. Trillanes, uh, Secretary De Los Reyes, you mentioned about these uh, CLOA recipients uh, who are being uh, investigated. Can you furnish us the names of these uh, these uh, recipients, particularly those whose properties are within the boundaries of the Hacienda Binay uh, 
Secretary de Rosales, please. Yes, sir, we can furnish you copies of uh, those who are, appear within the Sanchamp with the names of the others within the six barangays is a public record and they will also furnish you these uh, names. Okay. Uh, we would appreciate that at uh, ang plano po natin dyan, papatawag po natin itong mga taong ito at uh, hindi, hindi pe pwede yung mga abogado ang harap. At uh, malalaman natin kung sino talaga ang bumili sa kanila nung kanilang mga lupa. Uh, that's all... Uh, Mr. Chairman, we shall, Your Honor. Secretary, you said that the remedy of the government is the cancellation of the cloa. Yes, sir, because, because they have been abandoned or sold. Yes, because uh, as far as we are concerned, when we check the RD, uh, register, register of deeds, the cloas are still active, sabi mo. So what if, in fact, a cloa has been uh, sold, in fact, but not transferred? So can the uh, buyer... Uh, object to the cancellation of the CLOA? Because if he is, there is no record that he has actually bought it, then he would have no personality to contest it. Now, the situation that may arise is that there was an actual sale, but they did not uh, register it, then he will have to enter his appearance and say why the CLOA should not be, should not be cancelled. Anyway, at any rate, uh if they sleep on their, let us say, on their uh, remedy, allow the cancellation, uh, what will now happen to the, to the land? Well, that would mean, Your Honors, that the land will revert back to the Republic of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. The strange thing in uh, the six barangays, Your Honors, is that these are all by way of voluntary land transfer. Unlike a compulsory acquisition, the usual uh, case in CARP, in compulsory acquisition, is landowner's title gets transferred to the Republic of the Philippines, then it gets transferred to the, again, reform beneficiary. In the case of voluntary land transfer, it is landowner direct to the uh, beneficiary. So that if we cancel that, that CLOA, that, that particular title should go now to the Republic of the Philippines, just following a compulsory acquisition. The other uh, unique thing, Your Honors, about Rosario Batangas and practically all the entire eastern Batangas is that there are very few large land holdings in uh, eastern Batangas, unlike in the other part of Batangas where I come from, which is western Batangas. So the mode of transfer in eastern Batangas is mostly by way of voluntary land transfer. And that is why, for the information of the committee, Your Honors, as a rule now in, in the department, we are validating all voluntary land transfers, not only in uh, eastern Batangas, but also in other parts of, of the country to, to determine whether uh, the beneficiaries are in fact the real beneficiaries who should have gotten these this particular land holdings. Uh, wh 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 what sudden realization did you arrive at, uh, Secretary? There's a loophole uh, in, a, in a voluntary land transfer? Well, if you recall, Your Honors, in 2009, when, the, when this August body passed the Carper, they restricted the uh, availment already of the voluntary land transfer, precisely because there were many situations where the voluntary land transfer actually went to the heirs of the original uh, landowner. So this, was, uh, this, uh, back, this gap was closed in 2009. But what we have also found in many situations for those that have been distributed is that this is precisely what happened. There is no problem uh, when, there is no, when there are no tenants or workers in a particular parcel of land. But in some situations, there is a tenant, there is a farm worker, and by way of the voluntary land transfer, these were transferred to the heirs of the original owner. And that is... Uh, what we are trying to determine now and plug and possibly remedy, and we will go back to this August body honored for whatever uh, possibilities there can be. Because in a voluntary land transfer, who paid uh, the original owner for his land? The uh, beneficiary owner, it was a direct payment. Direct payment from? The... From the beneficiary himself or herself. Okay, so in effect, naiwasan uh, lang ang transfer ng lupa sa intended beneficiary under the law? Yes, sir. Kung may tenant po o worker, hindi siya inabigyan, 
at ang, ang natipid ho nung original owner ay yung estate tax, transfer tax, doc stamps. Okay, Secretary De Los Reyes, thank you very much for your report. But we will, we will await your future reports on the same subject matter. Please. We shall furnish uh, this August body a copy of our report and the names of these people that were already in the state. Thank you, sir. Your excuse, thank you, Secretary. Sir. Thank you. Thank you for attending our hearing. The resource persons and witnesses present in today's hearing. Tony Kimbo, please. Your Honor, may I proceed? Uh, present today are Secretary Virgilio de los Reyes of the Department of Agrarian Reform, uh, Attorney Darlene Marie Berberabe, President and Chief Executive Officer of Pagibig, and from COA, Director Joseph Anakai, who is assigned with the BSP, and Ms. Resurrección Cueta, a from... Abogado, even the counsel of uh, Mr. Delphine Lee, please, for the, the record. Counsels of Mr. Delphine Lee is their attorneys, Willie Rivera, she here, and Ronnie Garay, attorneys Garay and attorney. No, are you making a presentation, attorney Garay? No. Is attorney Rivera here? Can, can we call him now to, to join us and then? Sige, those who are appearing for the first time. Ah, maganda umaga po. The uh, joint hearing of the Senate Luriban Subcommittee on Proposed Senate Resolution Numbers 826 and 1114 is hereby called to order. Okay, uh, I, have with, I have with me here present uh, Senator Antonio Trillanes. May I call on uh, Director General K Attorney Kimbo to acknowledge the time. <clears throat> Can we ask Direc Director General Kimbo to administer the oath to these uh, personalities? Thank you. Those who are here for the first time, can you stand and raise your right hand? This will affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this proceeding. Thank you. You may take your seat. Director Anakai. First time? Uh, no. Yes. See, Resurrection Cueta. In Dakoa also, but assigned in Pagipi. And we have former Vice Mayor Mr. Ernesto Mercado. Engineer Mario Echanova, former department head of, in the city government of Makati. Attorney Renato Bondal and Mr. Nicolas Ching and CISO the sixth. And from Alpha Land, Jay Sangalang, and representing Mr. Roberto Ongpin, Attorney Rodolfo Ponferrada. And Mr. Gilberto Garcia from Noble Care. Correct? Yes. Any uh, personalities appearing for the first time before the 